In this work, we address several couple problems related to underwater vision. This image actually demonstrates all the problems and tools that we use. You can see that the illumination in this image is not uniform and it actually flickers. Moreover, you can see that the contrast is, uh, of the image is reduced with range due to scattering. Under these conditions, we would like to recover the 3D structure of the underwater image and our tools are stereoscopic vision and motion, which we also want to estimate. Now, to better understand the problem, let's look at this scene that was captured in a swimming pool. The strong flicker variations make it very difficult to estimate the camera motion and to stabilize the video. The known methods, which rely on feature points, would find it very difficult to extract real object feature points. But by combining simultaneous stereo videos, we can estimate the motion of the stereo rig, estimate a dense 3D structure, stabilize the video, and even render images without flicker. We term this process as the flickering. This is the bottom line of this work, and from now on we'll get into the details. This work can also be applied to a moving structured light stereo setups. In these setups, we have two cameras and a projector projecting a spatial temporal varying light pattern. This work can be useful if the setup moves throughout the acquisition time. But in this talk, we'll mainly focus on underwater scene. Before we dive into the details, Let's briefly see how this strange pattern is formed. When light rays pass through the water surface, they refract in different angles, according to Snell's law. The refracted rays form a random cost flickering caustic pattern. Okay, let's talk about some previous and related works. How can we benefit from flicker? So suppose I capture the same scene from two viewpoints simultaneously, like in this case where this is the left and the right viewpoints of the stereo, stereo setup. And suppose te somebody tell me that these points are corresponding pixels which correspond to the same object point. Now let's look at the intensity of these points over time. You can see that there is a very good correlation between the temporal intensity curves. But now, if you move the red point just a few pixels, you can see that the correlation is significantly lower and there is a very low match between the points. If you aren't convinced enough, let's randomly look at some corresponding pairs. We can see that there is a very good match between the temporal curves. So, we can claim that for each object point, there is a unique, unambiguous temporal signature. This signature enables us to find dense and accurate stereo correspondences under flicker. We can also combine spatial support and some smoother stern by formulating a minimization problem for multi-frame stereo. These are the results. These range maps were calculated using three pairs of stereo frames. So, we have several problems and tools from under, for underwater vision. As you saw, we previously showed that Flickr is useful for finding dense stereo correspondence underwater. This is also related to the space-time stereo framework and to structured light. In this, these works assume that the cameras and scene are static throughout the acquisition time. While in this work, we generalize this approach for free-moving cameras. Previous work tried to deflicker a scene from video by means of temporal filtering. 
This work assumed that the scene is static or quasi-static. We generalize the flickering for free moving cameras. Moreover, there are several works that deal with reducing the effect of scattering in images taken in scattering media. These works didn't incorporate motion and flickering illumination. In this work, we scatter the underwater images by using the moving stereo under flickering illumination, as we will see later on. Finally, there is a very large body of work for structure for motion. In our case, the illumination changes are much more severe than these approaches usually assume. We will see that feature point extraction, which is the basis for most uh, structure for motion algorithms, is not a simple task under Flickr. So, our work combines structure for motion and stereo, the Flickr and the scatter together. We will see that these problems are coupled and can be solved together using stereo and motion. So, we are done with the related and previous work, and from now on we will talk about the details of this work. We conducted a set of experiments, both in the lab and underwater. This is actually the fun part of this work. Our setup consists of two high-definition cameras in waterproof cases, mounted on a stereo rig. So, after this long introduction, let's understand the principle of the method. Let's look at this static video captured in a swimming pool. We will now render a vibrating movie sequence out of it and try to stabilize it. Stabilization results makes a good indicator for motion estimation. If we can estimate the motion properly, then we can stabilize the video. First, let's try to find interest points using SIFT. The blue stars are feature points found by SIFT. This scene is static over time, but there is almost no static feature point between consecutive frames. It actually looks like SIFT is a very good flicker detector. Now, let's render a, a vibrating movie, simply by moving a region of interest. And now let's try to stabilize it using SIFT. The result is not so good. And if we are not doing well in the simple case of 2D uh, stabilization, then we will definitely won't succeed, succeed in the general 6 degrees of freedom of camera motion. I didn't tell you that this scene was captured simultaneously in two cameras. So for each image in the left viewpoint, we can match between the viewpoints and create a stereo range map. As you can see, these maps are coarser and usually contain fewer details than the original frames. However, they are, they are illumination invariant. This is actually the main principle of our work. The 3D shape is illumination invariant and therefore can assist in stabilization and motion estimation under flicker. We do not have the 3D shape but we can estimate it and acquire it by using stereo in different viewpoints. Now, this is the stabilization uh, results using stereo, and to get some quantitative sense, this graph compares the stereo, uh, the stabilization using stereo, stabilization using SIFT, and the ground truth, which is known since we rendered the motion. You can see that there is a very good match between the ground truth and stereo stabilization, while SIFT yields significant error. So, we learned that we can't rely on feature points for stabilization under Flickr. Now, let's under understand the algorithm. For the first pair of stereo frames, we first calculate a 3D point cloud by using correspondence and triangulation for every point. Now, for the second pair of frames, we also calculate a point cloud in the same way. Next, 
we align the point clouds from consecutive frames using iterative closest point algorithm or ICP. The outcomes of ICP uh, are the relative transformation between the viewpoints where R is the rotation matrix and T is the translation vector. This transformation also represents the motion of the stereo rig. Using this transformation we can combine the point clouds into a larger model point cloud which is aligned to the first frame. Next, we can use the model point cloud and the new point cloud to calculate the transformation between the current frame and the uh, first frame. And then we can update uh, the model point cloud and so on. The calculated transformation and point clouds can then be used to warp the images and render static video sequences which looks like as if they were taken from the first viewpoint. So, we now have static stereo sequences. Let's see what can we do with it. The first use of the stabilized sequences is to refine the range map by using multi-frame stereo. We exploit the spatial temporal variations of Flickr and achieve much more accurate and robust range information. These maps can be used for refining the model point cloud and achieving a more accurate 3D reconstruction. What else can we do with the stabilized videos? We can apply pointwise temporal median on every point in the stabilized video and the flicker the images as you can see in this video. Ok, Let, let's see some more results from a structured light experiment conducted in a lab. A stimulation of underwater flicker was projected on the scene. The stereo rig was discreetly moved. This is why the movie is a bit bumpy. It's just a sequence of frames. And this is the reconstructed 3D structure and the viewpoints are in red. You can see the, the clearly see the walls, the poles, and the boxes. You may also notice the alignment of the point clouds. Now, the most challenging environment is in the sea. Here, the image suffers from strong scattering as well. So, this is the left viewpoint. And this is the 3D reconstruction of the sea floor. The weird obstacle in the corner of the image is used to correct the auto gain of the cameras for the scattering later on. You may notice that the contrast of the image reduces as the range increases. You may also notice that the colors are distorted. The original colors of the rocks and the sand vary between yellow and brown. We will now address this phenomenon and try to scatter those images. So, before we scatter, we need to understand how the underwater image is formed. So, the, there are two major components in the underwater image. The first component is the spatial temporal varying object intensity, which is attenuated over the line of sight. The second component is backscatter, which is the light that crosses the line of sight and a small portion of it is scattered towards the camera. And, as you can see, backscatter can also spatial temporally vary. After the flickering, we lost the temporal variations and we are left with this known model for scattering. So, in this model, we want to recover O, the object intensity, out of I, the measured intensity. So, by inverting the model, we get the following equation, where O is the object intensity which we want to recover, 
I is the measured intensity of the deflickered image. B infinity is simply backscatter at the range of infinity and can be estimated by looking at the horizon. Z is the range between the camera and object and we actually can get it by using stereo triangulation. So this is the first gain from stereo for, for the scattering. We get the range for each pixel in the scene. So we are left with eta, the attenuation coefficient which we still need to estimate. Note that eta is wavelength dependent, so we need to estimate it for each color channel. So, how can we estimate the eta? Let's use the fact that our setup is a moving stereo. For example, this submerged rock was cap captured from the two distances for two distances by the stereo setup. The red points are corresponding points, and I1 and I2 are their measured intensities. We can notice the fact that O is the same between the equations, since it is the same object point. So we are left with two equations and two variables. O and eta. So we can extract eta in a closed form solution. We therefore can say that the camera motion and different viewpoints modulates the scattering and enables the scattering. Taking a single point may be sensitive to noise, but if we consider several points, let's say around 5 to 10, the result is much more accurate and robust. So we defined a minimization problem in ETA, which considers several points, and the minimum for each color channel represents the estimated value. After estimating ETA, we can scatter every image for which we have a range map. So this is the original image, this is the deflickered version, and now the deflickered and the scattered. We can see that the colors of the scene are recovered and the contrast is improved. You may notice that the image is a bit blurred due to small stabilization misalignments. We will address this, this issue in future research. So in future research we will try to improve the alignment accuracy and this will improve the stabilization and the flickering results. In this work, we assume that the scene is static and motion occurred only by the cameras. So it is possible to extend the work to non-rigid scene motion. So, in conclusion, in this work we addressed the problem of stabilization and motion estimation under flickering illumination using a moving stereo setup. This is the data that we are working with. Stereo video pairs consisting of flickering illumination and scattering. The outcomes of our work are dense, stereo, uh, dense structure and motion estimation, the flickering and the scattering.